Which, oh, you got to turn it around the other way. What? <laughs> you got it backwards. See the other way. Okay, there you go. Now I know what the funny problem was. So, anyway. <laughs> My goal is to document as many of the reptiles and amphibians as possible on the refuge and compile them into a short field guide on where to find them and what they look like and how to distinguish them. And to catch the organisms, I use pitfall traps and perforates to catch as many organisms as possible. So that on the left is a pitfall trap. And over on the right you can see college students digging perforates. So a pitfall trap is basically just a bucket in the ground and you hope organisms will fall into it. It's not very complicated. But so we set three traps, um, two of which were just a few feet apart and one was about 50 feet over. Um, so, but that didn't work at all. We didn't catch anything. <laughs> Nothing. So, after talking to um, Dr. Corbin, the marine ecology teacher, he decided um, a better way to go about it would be to use herbarays. A herbaray is like a complicated, or a complex pitfall trap. You have, the way we did it, you have three pitfall traps and they're connected with aluminum flashing which is just like aluminum foil that forms a little wall. And this way, if an organism comes in from any direction, it will hit the aluminum flashing, and it will go either way into one of the buckets. And the way this is set up, it, it, um, it's more likely that organisms would wander into our traps than just a bucket in the ground. So um, I got some college students together and got them to dig me some pitfall traps in the forest. So I wasn't up for that. Um, but however, we only got to check them two times. But in the two times we checked them, we caught a lot of organisms. So if we would have been able to set them out for longer, we would have been able to catch them ourselves. OK, so the eco ecosystems of the refuge, there's forest, salt marsh, and grassland. The forest, there are two distinct types. There's forest where there's very little undergrowth, and there's forests where there's extremely dense undergrowth and you cannot really walk through it. And the, there is salt marsh behind the forest and the, um, the forest will transition into salt marsh and there's a small area of brackish marsh in between. And the grassland is a small strip, only a few feet wide of grassland that runs parallel with Chincoteague Road that goes, runs parallel with the refuge. And it supports a wide variety of plants and animals, even though it's so small, including a small population of bobwhite quail. So the location of the herbarays, um, one and two were set up in a grassy area where it was, it was damp and wet all the time. And then three was set up in the transition zone between the forest and the salt marsh, where there was brackish marsh. And I, I set one up there because I was hoping to catch different organisms than one and two, which were basically in the same habitat. So one of the organisms we caught was eastern, eastern box turtle. And the habitat of the eastern box turtle, it can have a variety of ecosystems from dry grasslands to damp forests. Um, but however, they are terrestrial turtles. They do not go in the water. And as you can see, it has the orange is the range of the eastern box turtle. And fun fact, it's the reptile of North Carolina. Stay reptile, fun fact. So, um, we actually didn't check them, we didn't catch them in our traps. We actually found them while digging our traps. So they were found in um, damp and grassy areas, like, like the areas we set up for herbarades one and two. So the next organism we caught was Fowler's toad. So it's, it's found out, found throughout most of the uh, eastern part of North America. It can inhabit a variety of habitats. Um, but it prefers areas with soft substrate so it can burrow and hibernate during the winter. So um, our specimens, most of our specimens were found in our herbarays. You could actually stand there and watch, watch them just walk into there. They're not very smart. Um, so, but they were most concentrated in herbarays one and two, um, which were the damp grass areas. They seemed to not like the muddy, uh, brackish marsh. So the next one we found was the spotted turtle, and you can tell the difference between the spotted turtle and the eastern box turtle, because instead of having orange kind of blotches on its shell, it has just small polka dots all over its shell. So it's, um, unlike the eastern box turtle, it's a semi-aquatic 
turtle, and it can have it most any body of water as long as it's a still or stagnant body of water. So um, the only specimen we found was found by the college students while they were digging pitfall traps, and it was about 50 yards away from a brackish marsh, but it was still it would be hard for the turtle to get from the brackish marsh to the um, to the area where we found it. So it's interesting to find it there. And um, we caught other organisms in our pitfall traps, not only reptiles and amphibians. So one of the things we caught was this extremely large female fiddler crab. And it was strange that we found it in herprite 1, because herprite 1 is about 50 yards away from um, a brackish marsh. So it would be hard, it would be strange to find a uh, crab so far away from the water. We also found a short-tailed shrew, which do not like to be handled, because they will bite you. So don't do that. Um, there are also wild turkeys on the refuge, and bald eagles that have a nest that you can see if you are driving over to Chincoteague. Um, near the seventh pole, you can see their large nest. That's fun. Any questions? Okay, that's good. Okay. <laughs> so I'd like to thank Katie Ray and Tate for being awesome mentors. Woo